Hey everyone, Miss E here, and today we're going to learn about watercolor resist and how to draw jellyfish. So we're going to start off with watercolor resist and what it is. So watercolor resist is a process of painting with watercolors, but using extra supplies. For example, a watercolor resist might include tape. It might include what's called masking fluid, or it might include crayons. So when we want to paint, but we don't want to paint the whole area, we would use paint uh, tape or we would use masking fluid. But today we're going to do what is called a wax resist or a crayon resist. What that means is that we are going to draw first with crayons and then we're going to paint over it. Now the reason it is a resist is because the wax ingredient in crayons does not let the water in the watercolor paint sit on top of it. So when we color, where we color with crayons, the paint is going to smooth over and paint everywhere else except for where we colored. So that's what watercolor resist is. And we're gonna draw jellyfish today for a couple of reasons. One, um, it is an underwater creature. So we can use the paint to be a symbol for water, but also Miss E actually really likes jellyfish and I find that watching them in the water, they're very relaxing to not only watch, but to draw as well. So just like our um, Vincent Van Gogh sunflowers, we are going to draw jellyfish three different ways using crayons, and then we're gonna paint over it with watercolors. So let's get started. So you can use white when you're drawing with crayons and it's kind of like a little surprise when you paint over with watercolor because you don't see what you're drawing. Now I'm going to use uh, different shades other than white because you can't really see what I'm drawing using white crayons. So we're going to first start with a simple jellyfish and we're going to use a per uh, blue crayon. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with a C. So it's going to be as if the jellyfish is going that way. And then we're going to make four other little C's where the centers are around each other. And then we're gonna make one more C going like this. So this is supposed to look like a moon jellyfish. So you can draw them from the side like this, or you can just draw a circle with three, sorry, four of those C's right in the center. So when we draw it, like this, it's like we're seeing the top of the jellyfish's head. But if we draw it when it's curved like this, it's more like it's turned to its side. So the next jellyfish we're gonna draw is a little more complicated, not too much. So we're gonna do the same thing that we started right here, and I'm gonna use a purple one to show that this is kind of like our medium design. So I'm gonna have my jellyfish going this way now, and I'm gonna make another curve going just like this and then I'm going to make the same curve inside and this is going to be the head of our jellyfish so it kind of looks like a bean and then we're going to add the little strands the stinging part of the jellyfish. Now these can go anywhere. They can go straight down, they can go around. It all depends on where your jellyfish is going. And I'm going to draw it face forward, just like our, um, our little jellyfish right there. And since I'm going to picture it going towards us, coming from here and forward. So I'm gonna draw 
some of the jellyfish stingers right here. And you know what? I'm going to add them. I'm going to add a little circle right here. I'm going to add the strings all the way through. The reason why is because I have my jellyfish being see-through. I'm going to add a little bit of color. I'm going to add a little bit of shading because we have our light coming down from the top of the water. So I'm going to add some shadow to the bottom of our jellyfish just for these two. So the, that is our medium style jellyfish. And now we're gonna go to our final one, which is a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna use red. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use red and yellow. Now the reason why is because not all jellyfish are translucent or see-through. Sometimes they have a little bit of color so I'm gonna start again with my little bean shape. So I'm gonna draw the whole thing this time. So see how we have our little bean shape right here? And the next thing is instead of having our little stingers like this where it's multiple little strings, I'm gonna add it as chunks, kind of making it look like a mushroom. Now this type of stinger is really big and they're colorful, kind of like a warning to other prey and predators. So I'm just going to bring it down just like this, make it a little smaller. And I'm going to add some color, that way you can see it better. But also, like I said, sometimes jellyfish are colorful for um, protection. Sometimes it's a warning to other animals saying, watch out, I sting. So I'm going to add little frills to the bottom of this stinger. And also it kind of helps you see a little bit better of where my jellyfish is coming from. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow for shadows. So I'm going to add some down here. I'm going to add some right here. Because like we said, our, our light source is coming from the top. And I'm going to add some little stingers as well going around our big stinger. So, and I'm gonna just draw one more. I'm gonna make it smaller. When these big jellyfish um, look smaller, it's because they're farther away. So I'm gonna make one smaller one right down here. So we start with our jelly bean, and then we start with our thick stinger. Now, you can look at any um, aquarium site. There's a lot of virtual tours going on, and you can observe how jellyfish swim in water. That'd be kind of cool, right? All right, so I'm going to show you our close-up of our smaller, our farther away jellyfish, and then we're going to start with the water coloring. So here's our tiny one right there. So... When we do our watercolor, we're gonna do two things. One is called um, just an initial water, uh, water wash, and then we're gonna paint. So watercolor can come in various different forms. Um, there's the containers that we see um, at school. We also have containers which are very similar. Like for ex example, this is Miss E's small version it's portable, so she can carry it anywhere. But also, you have watercolor 
that comes in little tubes like this. So what I did was I took some of this and I added it in some water. But first we're gonna do our wet wash. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take some clear water and we're gonna take a brush. Now you can use whatever size, but I'm gonna use a big one first so that I can cover the whole area just with clear water. So I'm gonna dink it. And then I'm just gonna put some clear water there's no paint on this. Now the reason why I'm painting with wa just water first is so it's easier for the color to spread. But also where the water hits, it's gonna be make the paint lighter in those areas. But if there's a dry area, that um, area is gonna be really dark with paint. So the first thing I did was I put some water on it and I'm gonna put the water right over here so I don't spill it. Now, I have my container of blue paint. Remember what I did was I have this type of tube. So what I did was I put a little bit, you don't need a lot, I put a little bit of watercolor in there and I mix it around in just some water. So, we're gonna take our paint, we're gonna make sure we don't put too much paint on it on our paintbrush and then we're just going to paint on our paper. Now you can tell that Miss E used a lot of water when she initially started painting. But as you can see, because she didn't use a lot of paint, I mean she used a lot of water, her blue paint seems really dry. Not dry. It seems it seems really light because she's used a lot of water. So I start first by painting the whole area. And I'm also going at an angle so the water is dripping straight down. And now we're gonna let this dry a little bit so that we can add some more paint. The fun part about watercolor is that you can add more and more paint as it dries um, to get different layers. So we're gonna let it dry just a little bit longer so she can add, so that I can add a little more paint to it to make it a little bit darker. All right, so now we're back. Um, now that our paint has dried a little bit more, I've also added a little bit more paint and a little less water to what we currently have. Um, the reason why I did that was because our paint was very light. It looks like it's really dark right now, but when you spread it out, it lightens up because of the amount of water that's in it. So we're gonna take our newly mixed paint, which has a little bit more pigment in it, that's the color part, and we're gonna spread it around. We're gonna make sure we don't add too much color, too much water to our paintbrush, or we're gonna have it um, uh, dripping just like we did last time. Now see how there's not so much paint on our uh, paper so now the paint is staying in its own spot now. And as you can see like especially with our yellow paint what's happening is that the um, the watercolor is not able to stay where the paint is. I mean, <laughs> where the crayons are. So, and in turn, it's gonna make our artwork pop out more. Now the fun thing about this project is you can always go back, color over with some more um, crayon and then paint over that again to have like a multi-layered approach. So, just about finished. And then we're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna look at the final picture together. All right, so now we're gonna let it dry and I'll show you what it looks like when we're at that level. All right, friends, 
Here we have it. Our picture is pretty much dry. It's still drying a little bit, but it's enough that I can move it around and show it to you up close. So if you look at our picture, specifically our yellow pieces, you'll find that our, um, our fish, our jellyfish are really popping out. And even if you look at like your yellow, which you kind of can't see it in my picture right here, but, um, our crayon has uh, rejected the watercolor and because of that, it really pops out and it really is very bright. Um, you definitely can notice the, this when you use um, lighter colors like our yellows. Um, it doesn't appear as bright with our blues and our purples, but it still works with those. So I hope you had fun learning about water resist, how to draw jellyfish, and I hope that you can take this um, knowledge and try to create your own uh, jellyfish scene or try to draw something else using our watercolor resist. So with that being said, I hope you guys have fun and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye guys.